Praise the Lord. And at this time, we're going to ask Sister Dolores, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, to say thank you, to thank you for this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your great grace, your tender loving arms of kindness unto us. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to, to gather together once again to share the word of God. Father, we thank you that your word is alive and is true, Father yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. From everlasting to everlasting. Yes, Lord. Father, thank we you. thank you that we can call on that great name of Jesus yes. in the shed blood of Calvary's cross, God, to meet every need, to right every wrong, to, to direct every path, Father. <clears throat> mighty name of Jesus. We lift up our pastor in a special way. We thank you for the work that's already begun in his life. We thank you, Father God, for you continue healing in his body. Father God, that's your man of God. We know that you love him and you have him in your care. Father, we lift up the Tanzamore family to you on this morning, God. You, God. We know you as healer, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. They are your children, God. <clears throat> We're calling on that great name of Jesus mm -hmm. to deliver the health and the healing to their bodies that they desire. We pray for his grandson, Father God, who's still in the womb, Father God. Kidneys, Father God, that they will function and function like never before, Father God. What the doctors have seen before, they will not see again, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that again, we know you as healer. We know you as savior. We know you as father. We know you as deliverer. We know you as protector. We know you as provider. God, it would take this day and every day after that to tell you how who you are father god we thank you that we have our own experiences along with your word of god that you've shown up time and time again and that there's absolutely nothing too hard for you to do so yes. father today again we give your name praise honor and glory we thank you for your faithfulness unto us now father as we get ready to go into your word father god we pray that you be with pastor Daryl, father god in the name of jesus leading god and direct him in all wisdom knowledge revelation and understanding Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness, and we thank you for your mercy. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. And yes. we say, thank God. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you so much for that prayer. At this time, we're going to have a scripture from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye accept. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abided not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and he is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my word about words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, reader and the hearing of his holy word. At this time, we're gonna um I'm going to mention we don't have a review of the youth this morning. But the women's ministry and the women's prayer will meet on Wednesday night at 7, 30, 7 o'clock p.m. I'm sorry. And I want you to know that we pray and that we welcome all requests for prayer and we honor all requests for prayer. So if you call, leave a message, or if you want to put it in on the, um, the group, or if even if you leave it on Facebook or wherever you leave it. If you can contact us, we will be glad to pray for you. 
So thank you so much. We have so many on the list. We are so grateful that God is showing up and doing what he does best. He's a healer. We know him as a comforter. We know him as almighty God. And <clears throat> So we just thank you all. At this time, we're going to ask for a song under the direction of Sister Cynthia Smith. I don't know if I got myself unmuted or not. You are unmuted. Are you fine? Okay, it was giving me a weird noise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart I rolled away, it was there by faith I received my Oh, and now I am happy all the day. At last, indeed, my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die. <clears throat> That sacred head for such a worm as I. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. time we're going to turn you over to our very capable teacher elder daryl ladd and, and praise the lord good morning everyone good to be praise back here once again uh, enjoyed that uh, ministry and song from uh, cynthia it's a beautiful song i actually uh, love that fourth verse uh, thinking that all god has done the writer said but drops of grief can never repay the debt of love i owe here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I could do. And if we stop and just think about the cross, I mean, we, Hallelujah. what else can we do but live for him? Give us, we, here, Lord, I give myself away. This is all that I could do. <sighs> we have a great challenge um, as believers to, to give ourselves away, to, to humble ourselves, submit ourselves totally to God to live his life in a way that's pleasing to him, bring him glory and bring him honor. Thank you, it's a Cynthia beautiful song. Uh, today we want to um, continue our lesson in Hebrews 13, uh, praying. Uh, we've been in this lesson seven or eight weeks now about prayer and it's, it's, uh, it's not by coincidence that we know. Um, this is where we belong this season. And um, uh, first lady Grace mentioned about the the nine to ten p.m. hour is catching on, uh, and, and it, it has caught on. And I remember last night uh, we got a request for prayer at nine thirty p.m. Right in the middle of this time, someone requested prayer, and then someone else followed right in. And it was so convenient because um, 
uh, me personally, I, I, I was actually getting ready to go down in prayer. And I'm sure someone else is probably already praying. And someone else will probably get ready to go down in prayer. Someone may have gotten up and get ready to go back down a prayer again. Because most people pray multiple times throughout that nine to ten just to catch everybody. So um, it, it's such a wonderful thing, and it's not by coincidence. It is not by coincidence we've been talking about prayer for the last eight weeks at least. Uh, but God has ordained that for us, and we're listening to Him. And let's keep keep prayers going. Don't don't stop praying. God is delivering. God is healing. He's hearing His own. So let's let's keep praying. So with that, let's, uh, we're going to today's lesson. Um, give me a second here. <laughs> okay, let's go to today's lesson, uh, Hebrews 13. Um, I'm going to share my screen and go right to it. Let's see here. All right, most of you may have read the introduction I sent out. There's nothing really new on that introduction. It's the same as it's been for the last, I guess, two weeks, uh, other than where we're going to start. Um, we ended at slide six last time. I added another slide, which you've probably seen already. We'll spend a little time on that one. Um, but just keep in mind all the things we've talked about, about prayer already from Luke 18. And we'll talk about that again. Daniel 9, Daniel 10, 2 Chronicle 20. Um, we'll sum all that up. It's this when God people cry out to him when God's people cry out to God in prayer God hears and God answers and God answers speedily that's just the way it is and so we need to take advantage of this blessed opportunity and I'm gonna call it even a luxury to go to God go to the one who has all power in his hands uh, you, you can't appeal no one can appeal with God when, when God makes this rule that when God makes that call, when God answers, it cannot be repealed. It can't be appealed. It's just the way it is. So God has the final say so on everything. And we are his children. And it's just a great feeling to know that that our father has the final say so. That's <laughs> just, it, it's just wonderful. So let's continue to go to God in prayer. Uh, you know, just, just pleading to God in prayer. So let's keep that up. And so we want to, uh, continue this first clause in Hebrews 13, 18, uh, when the writer says, pray for us. And uh, that's what we'll be on. That's what, that's what we'll be today. So let's go to our lesson text. I'm going to read verse 17 again. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to read verses 18 and 19 together. If they could be together, I'll make it sound like a chorus. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Pray for us. So we we trust we have a good conscience. In all things, willing, willing to live honestly. But I, but I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Amen. And so we've covered the, the meaning of the words that I put in bold uh, from the Greek text there. Um, but you see those, you probably read them already. We won't uh, go through those again today. Uh, at least at this point. So our uh, anchor passage we talked about before is, is constantly, we'll read Luke 18 and the bottom line for those of you who, who haven't joined us in the past, the bottom line from Luke 18 is God hears his people, God responds, God responds quickly. That's not the issue, God is faithful, God is gonna keep being God. God has not left the throne, had not had any indication that he will ever leave it. He constantly ruled and reigned. And the only question is, it's not will he do it. The only question is when he does it, will you be there? Will he find, when the son of man cometh, will he find faith on earth? So from this, we need to know that if we're praying, we stay in that prayer posture. We, we stay in that posture of, of waiting and expecting for God to deliver and not doing something differently or making a new plan. So we just constantly wait to hear from God. Um, we That's just in there for, We've talked about that. We pray to God, not to man. This is where we left off last Sunday. <clears throat> and we talked about Moses and uh, looks like it was like a game of hot potato. You know, God told Moses, these are your people. Moses said, God, these are your people. You brought them out of Egypt. Uh, and, and God says something in uh, verse 32, uh, chapter 32, verse number nine. And the Lord said unto Moses, I've seen this people and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Now these are God's people. 
uh, but they're stiff neck, stiff neck people, but God still loves these stiff neck people. So it's great for us because now we can relate. You know, these, these were not perfect people. They were God's people, but they were his people. It's like your child is not a perfect child, but you don't tell everybody that. You don't let anybody else talk about your child the, the way they, you tell it. Your child is perfect till they get home. You let them know how bad they really are. But God says, <laughs> my people, you know, y'all know it's the truth. God people, he said, these are stiff neck people, but they're my people. I love them. Okay, so we don't talk about God's people. God can talk about his people. And that's you and that's me, but he loves us and he gave, gives us leaders. And he gave his stiff neck people, Moses. And Moses was the, the meekest man on earth. And they just pushed Moses to the limit. It was like unbearable. And Moses just, they just kind of, Moses just meek as man on earth, the Bible says. And he had to deal with stiff neck people. Ah, Moses needed prayer too. So you can see what Moses went through. That Moses should have begun a lot of prayer. And Moses did get help. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is when we look at Moses' situation, Moses didn't ask for this. It's not, it wasn't mm -hmm. his prayer plan. But this is what he got. God mm -hmm. called him. God put him in that position. And he served faithfully doing what God called him to do. And when we look at what Moses went through and his challenge and the size and magnitude and depth and the breadth and that job, that there's a lot of calls to be in prayer for Moses. That hasn't changed. You know, God's people are still stiff neck people. You know, leading God's people, being a pastor of saints, that, that's, that's a job that I don't know who would want. But since we are, believers and we attend church and we are members of the church it is our job it's our duty our responsibility to constantly need to be in prayer for these leaders so when the, the writer of hebrews says pray for us this should be like second nature you know you know uh, we're doing it anyway we're doing it already mm -hmm. but we're going to step it up a notch we're going to do it more fervently now you know put you at the top of the list i'm going to prioritize our prayer for the leaders now uh, the next uh, slide seven is one that I just added this week, and uh, I, I, I didn't have a quarter question this, this week, but for those who don't know, every now and then we have what we call a quarter question, and it stems from the time we were kids. Uh, my mom, your mother lad, would have a quarter question at the end of Sunday school, and it would be a tough thought provoking question, and we kids try to get the answer, and whoever gets the right answer will get a quarter, and then um, we have that every now and then, but we upgraded to a roll of quarters. So we'll have those from time to time uh, to challenge you uh, Sunday school scholars uh, for a question. And, and we've had a few winners recently and uh, we sent out a roll of quarters uh, to those, those winners. Now today it's a book question. And the reason there's a book question is that, you know, as many of you may know that I'm the, uh, I serve as the, uh, the president of the Sunday school auxiliary for the state of Oklahoma PAW. And part of this, um, and in the region that I'm in, that we're in, we're in Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Alabama. And this region, <clears throat> we have meetings uh, every now and then. And this last meeting we had, it was about the, um, there's a scholarship for authors. So uh, I did a little quick canvas of, of the state council. And I know there's an author in, in Lawton, uh, Suffolk Bishop uh, Joe Williams. So I asked him, would you like to you know, submit a book for the scholarship, this eight or four scholarship? And he said, yeah. And so he, and I didn't know what book he was gonna choose, uh, but he has several books and I've even bought some of his books and they're very good books. And so when he said, I'll send you the book I'm gonna submit. And so I said, okay, great. So he sent me the book. And again, this is not by coincidence. <laughs> so the book that he sent me that he's gonna submit is called Understanding God's Pastors. I thought, oh, and it was a quick read. You know, so I just started reading the book. And it was a, it was a great book. And part of the book talked about, you know, what God's pastors require from the saints. And he lists a few things. So I list those four things on the, on the left. <clears throat> and now you think about if Moses would have had these type of people, he would have been in good shape, but he had a stiff neck people. Okay. Uh, and so, but, and, and what I like about when I was reading this is that he referenced some of the same things we've been talking about in Hebrews 13. Again, that's not by coincidence. So what I want to do is uh, look at these uh, things on the left side, those four things, what God's passed. And this is from uh, Suffering Bishop, you know, Dr. Joe Williams, the way he, uh, the way he wrote in his book. I'm not trying to edit it or, you know, say it's in the Bible and say this was in his book. And so uh, he does use a lot of biblical references uh, to make his point. So the four things that he mentioned, he actually mentioned more than this, but 
uh, four of the things that he mentioned was live in obedience, submission, and humility. That's our job as saints. Faithfulness to local church services. That's our job as saints. And exhibit Christian conduct and respect and honor authority. Now, this would make this would make the pastor's job a lot less difficult if everyone did this, you know. And then when they have to give an account for us and talk about us, then it'd probably be better for us. I mean, because the whole point when we talked about obey them to have the rule of you, because they must give an account, um, as those have given an account, then we know that there's like this performance abuse. And it wasn't for their benefit, it was so things would be good for us. The Bible says it so because this would be unprofitable for us. So this makes it goes well with us. So now uh, my question to you is, when you look at those four requirements on the left, and you can pick any one you want to, which of those looks like something we've talked about already uh, in Hebrews 13 or Hebrews 10, uh, anything like that that we could do as believers? Um, I think we won't look like the stiff-necked people. And this, this would be the, the way we're supposed to live, the way we're supposed to operate, the way we really, you know, uh, submit ourselves and honor uh, the pastor. Anyone have any any uh, comments on that or want to answer that question of anything we talked about? And if you do, you get a you get the uh, you get a copy of his book, or uh, he has a, a few other books too that that I read that was really good too. You can pick one of those as well. Uh, just so you know, one of the books is. Uh, Behave yourself. The Holy Ghost is more than a shout. That's a good one. I read that one. Uh, another one is just be happy and enjoy life. And they got some other book too, but I just mentioned a couple that I read that I thought was pretty nice. So anyway, anyone have any uh, comments on first one? Live in obedience, submission, and humility. Have we talked about that? Okay, I like I keep the books to myself then. In that case. Yes, we have. We've, we've talked about one and four. Okay, someone go ahead. And who's talking? You can go ahead, Lady Grace. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a couple of passages from what he said after you uh, after we get comments. Uh, and I'll just read some of the passages from the book because I think it's very uh, enlightening. So someone go. Uh, who's, who's there first? I heard uh, two people I heard, I think it was Cynthia and Sister Grace, is that correct? That was D. Oh, it was D? Okay, D and Grace? Okay. No, no it wasn't me. Okay, I, I, okay, let's go with Sister Grace first, then whoever else that was. Grace, tell us who the other person was. <laughs> okay, if it was D, I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was D. Um, All right. We talked about number one, living obedience, submission, and humility. Okay. In, it's in chapter 13. Okay. And also here lately, respect and honor authority. Number four, verse 17, obey them that have rule over you and submit mm -hmm. yourselves for they watch out for they watch for your souls. Okay. Um, I mean, okay, um, and, and keep going, but uh, um, we'll take that one first. Um, I'm just read what he, what he says in his book and then we want you to keep going. So he takes living obedience, submission, and humility. And the verses he used are the same verse we talked about. We just, we just mentioned Hebrews 13 and 7 and Hebrews 13 and 17. Remember them which had the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. And then he says, Paul, <clears throat> Pastor Paul reminds the saints to be responsive to their pastoral leaders. Listen and obey the, their counsel. They are alert to the condition of your lives and they work under the supervision of God. So contribute to the joy of their leadership. Why would you want to make things hard for them? That's what Joe's comment on that. So I think that was, uh, and I think the same verse you were talking about, which again, this is no coincidence that he highlights some of the things we've been talking about in Sunday school. That was very good. Uh, uh, you got something else or anyone else? So that's one book right there. So that's, uh, that was Grace, right? Amen. All right. All right. So Grace, uh, okay, there's one book. I have one. All right. Uh, someone else. Well, I have, I have one. Oh, okay. Uh, who's speaking? Uh, to Sabrina. Okay, Sabrina. Okay, great. Yeah, I, 
being that I, uh, my brother is my pastor. <laughs> uh-huh. And of course, I, you know, my initial pastor, Pastor Breshaw, it is the submit, uh-huh. the obedience to God and of course, obedience to leadership mm-hmm. and to the, the rules and the different things that's in the church helps the pastor a lot. Mm-hmm. Because when he enforced things, uh, the key people need to definitely be carrying those things out. And can you imagine if we're out of line, it's going to cause the other ones that are coming in or the other ones that aren't as, uh, hasn't grown to that level to uh, to discourage them or to set a bad, bad example for them. If I'm always late and I'm always this shuffle and I don't know what my Sunday school book is and I and my lesson, I can really, you know, instill some bad stuff in them. So, or if I'm, you know, not living uh, morally, you know, uh, a, a more life for the people. Mm-hmm. So it's so important to help him in that area to just be prepared be on time, be a tither, be a giver. Um, if you don't agree with it, pray about it, Amen. you know, and it's just the human nature, you know, uh, we're not robots, right. but the human nature is pray about it. Don't be like, oh, Pastor, you know what? I just don't think, uh, no, no, just pray because others are watching you now. And, uh, and, and when you talk to him, just be, very, I, this is my brother and, mm. You know, my my family like, why you call your brother Pastor White? I said, what you call your brother? I mean, what you call your pastor? It's just because he's my pastor. You why would you call him Joe? Because he's my pastor. He's Pastor White. Amen. So just respect yeah. him, yeah. respect him, even in phone conversations on the phone. So it goes Amen. a long way. Yeah. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. That's good. Let me read uh, uh what um uh, Dr. Joe Williams says about it. He said, God pastors want members to obey. Members are required to do what pastors instruct based upon the word of the Lord. Members should also be submissive, come under authority, just like you said, and be humble. Jesus was our greatest example of obedience, submission, and humility. Although he was all powerful and sovereign, he allowed himself to be tortured and killed in the most dishonorable and appalling manner of the day on the cross. He submitted to the will of God to save humanity. Pastor Paul in Philippians 2, 7, 8, describes, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That was very good, Evangelist White. All right, so there's a there's another book. All right. All right, someone else. So we got two books gone already. I have something to say. I like the one, um, respect and honor authority mm-hmm. it's like and, and i've i've seen this go on for years and years where members don't they, they they don't like to to do they don't necessarily agree with what the pastor is saying or doing mm-hmm. it and that's to me that's 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 like wrong to not listen to, to respect and honor authority if he's the pastor of the church, it's like it's like the president of the United States. When he speaks, everybody listen. Everything you might not agree with totally, but if you just really pray about it and read about what he's saying and you read it in the Bible, you run up on it later on and say, that's what he said. And mm-hmm. then it makes you get back in line and you know what he said to you. It was out of love, not anything else. But respect and honor authority. Mm-hmm. We should always do that, honor and, and respect our pastor, our, our members, our, everything, but especially the pastor, because like you said, his job is a hard one. I wouldn't want it. Hey, man, that's beautiful. I actually like that. I actually uh, listened to one of my friends uh, this morning um, uh, on the East Coast. I was listening to their service. And he was preaching this morning, and he said some of those same things you're saying today. So I think that was really important. I don't think it was coincidence he was talking about that today either. Uh, but the, that's nice. Now, when I look at uh, Dr. Joe's book, uh, y'all need to get this book, really. If anybody wants it, just, just put your, uh, uh, but then you see the, the text, the the, uh, the text number, text your address and your name and address, and I'll make sure you get a copy of the book. It, it's just a great book. Uh, but to those same lines, uh, it says, Pastor Paul instructs us to appreciate the pastoral leaders who give you the word of God. He says, never forget your fathers in the gospel who saw potential where others saw waste, who refused to give up on you and who worked with you until you were transformed. 
Doesn't this qualify them to be worthy of honor and respect? Remember, if you really love God, it will not be hard to love, understand, and accept God's pastors because they are sent by God. The saints should love their pastors and give them double honor for their labor of love. That's, uh, Paul wrote in 1 Timothy. We honor them by being present. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, Pastor Joe talking. We honor them by being present and punctual. Someone said that already. I think it's eventually like, present and punctual at scheduled services and events. It is proper etiquette to call them if you can't make it as well. It is appropriate to financially compensate them for the loss of income sustained and fulfilling their duties. This is traditionally done. So start contributing to the joy of their leadership. I mean, just, it just really makes a play that, you know, we got to do our job. You know, there's a lot that we could do as believers. So it won't be, we won't be a burden and a, and a drain on the pastors. When we do that, it's for our own benefit. It, it's, it's for our own benefit. So things will go well with us. And that, that's the whole point. So things will go well with us. They don't get, you know, they don't get you know, credit. But it goes well with us when we honor and respect and uh, uh, this authority that God has placed over us. Uh, that's God's rule, God's plan. Those are God's words. All right. So I have uh, Grace, um, Evangelist White, and Brother Carl. Okay, I got three books so far. Anyone else? All right. I'm not going to read. Uh, uh, well, there's one thing else we talked about. Uh, Play for the locust church service. Next, Evangelist White talked about that. All right, we'll, we'll move on. But anyway, so it's, uh, I'm sure, did someone else have anything else? It's a great book. All right. So uh, if you three would, uh, that number on the end of uh, the, uh, the 405-777-2330, if you would put your name and the mailing address, I'll make sure you get uh, a copy of the book. All right. Rafael Daryl. Yes, someone else. I, think, I can I hear you. My, I sent you my address too. Didn't you say anybody who wants one? And I <laughs> and I sent my address. <laughs> well, you know, actually, I was I was talking. Grace, uh, Lady Grace, and I were talking at the same time, but I, I let her, you know, go ahead since she's first lady. Okay. And, but she read the the scripture that I was going to read, so I just didn't bother with it. Oh uh, no, I, no, no, bother with it. Go, no, bother no, with it. no, I, no, I'm just going to point to the scripture of Hebrews 13 and 17 about obeying those who have rule over you. A amen. And, and, that, and that's the whole point, because it's not just anybody who is over rule of you. It's the ones who have the rule of you who have taught you the word of God. Right. And that's, that's the whole point. And someone made that very clear. I don't remember who, when we went through that, someone made that very clear. Uh, I think it was Dr. Anderson who said it, but uh, Dr. Grant who said it. But the point is that we know who these people are and we're supposed to obey them. And we respect and honor them. And it's not because of who they are. Like Evangelist White said, Evangelist White said, because of my brother. He said, like, my brother's a pastor too, you know? But I call him pastor. I respect and honor him as pastor. Not because he's my brother. I got three brothers, you know? But this one is my pastor, you know? So he, he gets treated like a pastor. And so that's different. But I love him, love all my brothers. But the point is that we got to know who a pastor is. And we can read examples in the Old Testament by Moses and, and Miriam and, and Aaron. I mean, there's, there's something different there. You know, it's just because you're your, your sister, this, this is your pastor. And God makes it very clear in how he deals built with them as, uh, as well. But we're not going to talk about that today. That's, that's another Bible study. All right. So uh, anyone else? So I have uh, Cynthia and anyone else now, seriously. And I'm saying this because this is like, it's almost like um, th this helps us uh, become better, better believers uh, and, and better children of God. So anyone else who desires a copy of the book, um, use that same text number. Text your name and your address, and I'll make sure you get a copy of the book. It's a great book, and it's going to help you. Uh, and I, I wouldn't tell you if I, if I didn't like the book, but I read, you know, so I'm thinking it's a lot of great things. In any book, you know, you don't eat the whole thing except for eat the whole Bible. But everything else, there's a lot of good in this book, and I'm going to say it that way. All right. All right, so anyone else, just please do that, and I think you'll be blessed by it. Or right, any other questions or comments? So, and if you put your name in there, I'm probably going to ask you something next week. So don't 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 think that you know. I still want to hear what you got to say. Anyone have, have anything else to say today on on these uh, these four things here? All right, all right. We'll continue on then. You have another chat at next week, both will maybe. All right, let's go to uh, about out of time. So let's do this last one um, today. We're going to stop at slide eight. Let me see how many slides do we have. Eight. And two more slides. Okay. All right. Great. So we're going to do this um, this one today, slide eight, and we'll we'll pick up at the end of it again. But we'll continue on Lord's will next week. 
with slides nine and 10, unless I throw another slide in there, I don't know. So look at Philippians three, and this is a, another example. We talked about Moses example. Uh, now we're talking about um, Paul. Now uh, um, Philippians three, and I'm gonna read it. And then the question is, I have a couple of questions on the right side. This is Paul, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Now, when you look at this, <clears throat> Paul had a lot going on and he had a lot of opportunities and a lot of choices, very well educated, he could do a lot of things. And, but he says, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So he's in my, all of us want to apprehend something. I'm, I'm chasing, I'm on a career path. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the corporate ladder. I'm trying to break the glass ceiling. Uh, I want to be in the C-suite, you know, you know, something like that. I, I, I'm trying to manage my career and be this and be that. And Paul didn't say that. He says, I want to apprehend something too. I, I, I'm, I have a career goal here. I have a dreams and I have aspirations as well with all my background that he went through here. He says, this is what I, I want too, but what do you want? He says, I want to apprehend. My goal is to reach whatever, whatever God has apprehended me, whatever Christ Jesus apprehended me. So when you look at apprehended in the Greek, kind of labano, I mean, it sounds like a violent word, but anyway. Catalabano. Uh, it means to seize, yeah, eagerly take possession of. Like, you mean getting on me? No, I got you now. He says, Christ apprehended him. He didn't say, like, yo, anybody want to come down the aisle? Yeah, I, I, I like to come down the aisle and, 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 and go work for you, Lord, and be an evangelist and be a missionary and be a pastor. Yeah, yeah, sign me up for that. No, that's not what happened. The word says apprehended. That means he was taken down, he was taken possession of, he was caught. By whom? Jesus Christ caught him. Jesus Christ seized him and called him to be this apostle. So he says, I want now that I've been apprehended. He says, I want to go do that. That's my career goal. Those are my dreams and aspirations now. The question is, could Paul have been doing something else with his life? That's yes or no question. Could he have been like a successful person? Maybe on a question of fortune, maybe on the cover of Fortune magazine, maybe on the cover of Black Enterprise, someone who's done it, the movers and shakers. Could it have been that person? If you just look at his bio, stock of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, touching the law of Pharisee, concerning mm -hmm. the persecuted church, touching the righteousness, which is the law, blameless. But the, all the stuff that was gained for him, could he, could he have done something else than to be an apostle? Amen. Yeah. Yes, he had choices. Now, many people don't have choices. So they say, uh, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that. I might as well just be this then. Because they let me be somebody when I go to the church. Because I could, but no, if you got choices, it's a different story altogether. You still could be a believer, you still could be saved, but something special when someone says, I could be here, but I've been apprehended. And to know that you've been apprehended, you still got that will, though. <laughs> you still got that will. But you know that God of apprehend, Jesus apprehended you to be used by him, and you're okay with that. And Paul says, I'm okay with it. I'm now trying to chase down the reason he chased me down. So it's a whole other story now. So it's different. So, but how do we do it? You know, I think about, you know, Pastor Bobby talked about, you know, years ago, you know, this is back when $100,000 was a lot of money. A year is not a lot of money now. But back when it was a lot of money, you know, he had these job offers, go here, go here, go here. But that's not, he said, but God told him, but I'm thinking, ooh, I'm glad God was telling you that, you know, and not me. And God told him, no, I need you to stay here at 
apostolic faith, which is now Oak City Church, and continue to teach and continue to teach and continue to teach. And he gave a whole lot. But he don't tell that story all the time. He don't tell everybody that story. But the point is, but he was apprehended to do this job. He was apprehended. It's not like he can still go do a lot. I know this. You know, you know, he can. The options are there. But the options are not on the table when you consider that God has apprehended you for something else. Will you chase and pursue what God has called you to do? So when we see pastors like Paul or, or Moses, because he was having living his life fine up in Horeb. He was, he was doing okay. He was enjoying life. Fine. Paul, fine. Sanhedrin. I mean, he was a somebody, you know, somebody powerful and mighty. Very well educated, had many choices. But when he's out here making tents. <laughs> you know, a tent maker? He can do every job in there. He can do anything. But he says, no, I'm going to pursue what God has called me to do. That's the pastor. And when we see that, we got to honor that. We got to respect that. Because not many people could do that. Not many people could do that. They said, well, let me go ahead and just get as much as I can on this corporate ladder first. Then I'll switch over when I get 65 and 70. I give God what I got left. What you got left, really? How about giving what you what he's giving you? You don't even know what's going to be left. So Paul is a great example of a, a pastor that deserves our prayers, deserves the saints' prayers. And we are no different. Our pastor deserves our prayers. Our leaders deserves our prayers because they're doing what many people can't do or won't do. Just, just flat out won't do it. Not, no, I can't do that. I, 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 got, I, got, I got stuff I got to do. And so when we see this, the writer is, is simply saying, when he says pray for us, yes, pray for us. Pray for us. That's what we are right now in this season of prayer. And again, it's not, and I'll say it at least 100 more times probably, it's not by coincidence. This is all by God's design and God's orchestration. We are to pray. I mean, seriously, fervently pray for these leaders. We do have no idea of the burden. And we just get a glimpse into it. But if you could imagine you in those shoes, it, it, it's staggering. And you're not in those shoes. I'm not in those shoes. But I can only imagine it's staggering. I can only imagine how it would really be if I was in those shoes. I, I don't want that job. <laughs> I, don't want, I, don't who, I don't know who wants that job. You know, Paul never said he wanted that job. Moses never said he wanted that job. They said, this is the job that God gave me to do, and I'm going to be obedient. And our job is to pray for these leaders. Pray for these leaders. And what Paul do? He did what God called him to do. That was a very powerful move. And he's worthy of their prayer. And our leaders are worthy of their prayer. So I'm going to stop right here at, uh, at uh, slide eight. But uh, any comments about anything we talked about today or any questions, you could, you could um, share those now. And then next week, Lord's will, we want to start with um, uh, this, the rest of the verse, um, slide nine and slides 10. And uh, I think that would be it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do that next, next week, Lord's will. And if you have uh, the train left the station, then he could talk about. Like Paul talked about these things after he gave up all that stuff. He said, those things I counted for lost. Now that I'm thinking about counting them for lost, I'm wearing this thing out. Y'all pray about me, pray that I make the right decision. No, after he made the call, those things I counted for lost, boom. Then he said, I counted all those things for lost. Wow. Yeah, so you don't have to access the option. Just listen to what God is saying. Yeah, that's a beautiful point, Dave. Beautiful point. Uh, mm -hmm. That's everything. Yeah, excellent. Pastor, you and Dolores brought something to mind about a year or so ago, working in the mental health field. Mm -hmm. When I was in Virginia, I'd worked as a QMAC, which is a qualified mental health profess professional. Mm -hmm. You go into the homes and um, you deal with the families and it was the adolescents that were having behavior problems. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, I'm here in Dallas and still working part-time at the airport, early mornings, you know. So one, this one particular morning, got out of my car and it was a position for QMAC out here. And I told the Lord, I was, I was so exhausted. And I said, God, you know, I do not want to do QMHP out here in Dallas. I said, but God, if that's your will, if that's what you want for me, God, I would do it. And I had peace. I left it at that. Wow. So a couple of weeks, I went for the interview, got the job. The job was held up for about two weeks. 
the lady didn't know why. She said, I want to make you guys an offer. You pretty much have a job, but I just can't say it because I don't know what's going on. So within those two weeks, I got a phone call from someplace that I hadn't heard of. Don't know how the lady got my resume. She talked about how she was impressed. She's impressed. Come in, blah, blah, blah. Got that job. So the, about two days later, the lady contacted me from the QMAC job and said, okay, we can finally make you guys the offer. I said, ma'am, I thank you for it, but I have taken another position. And this position where I'm at now was perfect for me. Uh, wow. But when you talk about the sincerity, I was sincere. I said, God, you know, but it, just every fiber. Right of me, every part of me, God, I don't want to do this, but if you, if this is where you want me to be, God, I will do it. Amen. That's, man. And, and that's, that's a beautiful, and, and that's, that's excellent. That's a beautiful example. And God wants us to obey us. He, he positions us and he puts us in a position where it's difficult to disobey him. I mean, he, he's not going to give you these, these options and choices where you don't really, can't see clearly. He's going to make it very clear to you what his will is. Otherwise you'd be disobeying God. You say, well, they, they could have asked a few more questions or listened to the clues. No, it's very clear. God makes it very clear. Um, he wants us to obey him. And he makes it easy for us to obey him. We see the path. You have to do some work to disobey God. You have to really do some work to disobey God. But people do it. So that's a beautiful example. Just lay it all out on the line. Say, God, I'm going to listen and I'm going to do it from your heart. And he's tell you. You have a choice to do it. That's beautiful. Uh, Pastor Darrow, can you clarify the number that um, people can contact us with? Okay, let me uh, let me uh, go back on this on the screen. And appreciate everyone's uh, participation. We'll finish up next Sunday, as well. And one more thing: make sure you text that number, text your your name and your address. We want the book sent, and I'll make sure those get out to you this week. All right. Thank you so much. As usual, we got a lot of insight from our teacher today and from uh, participants and members, visitors, we thank you so much. At this time, we wanna just say uh, thank you to our visitors who are with us today. We always give you opportunity to have a comment if you like, but uh, we wanna say that we thank you all for joining us, visitors and members alike. We just, uh, we appreciate you worshiping with us. And at this time, if no one has anything to say, any of our videos so much, and um, we're going to go back to Pastor John to close us out. And um, are we going to meet at 1140 on Facebook? That's correct. Today? Okay. At 1140, meet us on Facebook. Thank you. And at this time, Pastor John. Praise the Lord. Wonderful message as usual. Pastor Daryl, thank you for being led. Um, guys, we just, we just, we are so blessed. We're so blessed to have Pastor Daryl, <laughs> Pastor Bobby, Pastor Daryl in our midst. Thank you so much. And, Pastor, um, uh, and I mean, what a fitting, what a fitting lesson. Um, thinking about the people who have rule over us that, that, uh, the labor, they labor for us. So we just, we just thank, thank God for them. Um, uh, let, let's be encouraged. We're going to close in prayer and then we're going to go to the 1240 session. Um, if, if, there are, if all hearts are clear, no other comments. Heavenly Father, we just, we just thank you for your words, God. We ask, Father, that, that you uh, bless us to, to walk, to walk the walk, God, to walk the walk. Thank you, Jesus. And um, we want to be found doers of your word and not hearers only deceiving our own selves, God. So Father, we just ask in Jesus' name that, that you bless us to, to put these things in proper perspective in our own lives, God, so that we're found given our, our pastors and uh, those who have rule of us um, the proper, you know, their proper place in our lives. Um, and, and Father, just uh, because this is an extension of our love for you, God, and our obedience towards you, God, it's, it's an extension of, of how we feel about you. God. And so we just, we just ask that you continue to bless us to grow and to learn and to, and to be better and better each day. We thank you, Father, for your word. And um, I ask in Jesus' name that you anoint and bless the second service today. Uh, till the hearts of the unbelievers. Thank you. Edify the saints, God. We thank love you. We thank you. We praise you. Thank we you. we lift up our pastor to you in Jesus' name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Touch his heart, God. Thank you, Jesus. 
just body God. Bless him. Thank you. Bless him, God. Thank you. We love him. We love him, God. We're thankful for him, Father. So we ask in Jesus' name that you bless his life, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys. See you guys at 1140.